Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Jolie, and this is the series where we read from Alan on Literature, and today is August 23rd. So we're going to be reading from the standard books that I read from, Courage to Change, One Day at a Time, and Alan on and Help for Today. Very grateful that you're here, and welcome. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So let's see what page they're on. I'll start with Courage to Change. And um, I did not open these up, so let's see where we're at. All right, these aren't working. Got to upgrade the, <laughs> the number. I'm at a 2.5, so I think these are what? These are my older glasses. When I first started losing my sight, I think these are 1.25 or something. And I could sort of see, but not. So let's move on from that. <laughs> so, can you relate? All right, so page 236 on all the books. And here we go, August 23rd. I developed a tremendous fear of making mistakes. It seemed crucial to cover every possible outcome because mistakes often led to an avalanche of accusations and abuse from the alcoholic and eventually from myself. So my self-esteem diminished because the slightest error felt huge and I couldn't let it go. So I began to cover up and rationalize my mistakes and all the while desperately trying to maintain an appearance of perfect self-control. In Al-Anon, I learned to take down that rigid wall of seeming perfection, to honestly admit mistakes, and to open myself for growth. Step 10, in which I continue taking my inventory and promptly admit when I am wrong, was uh, has been liberating because it challenges me daily, to be honest. Sometimes it makes me squirm, but I know that when I tell the truth, I am free of the lies that held me back. As Mark Twain put it, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. I will probably make a mistake of some sort every day of my life. If I view this as a personal failing or pretend no, no mistakes have occurred, I make my life unmanageable. When I stop struggling to be perfect and admit when I am wrong, I can let go of guilt and shame. And this is cause for rejoicing. Joyce. Telling the truth will set you free. <laughs> so the book of common prayer, there's a quote. It says, help them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Mm, let me see. So I began to cover up and rationalize my mistakes. Uh, yeah. Um, that just opens up a lot of uh, an avalanche of accusations and abuse. So yeah, um, there's a lot of things that are coming up for me for that. What can I just pull out right now? What first came up for me was when um, I was running, uh, I was, I was managing, I was working on managing restaurant that um, my, um, uh, my husband at the time and I had, and um, there were so many mistakes and problems. And um, I tried my best to look as if everything was okay, but there were times I just couldn't take it anymore. And I would just like freak out and I would say, we can't do it this way. And he'd be like, just do it. And he would say, I would fire you if you weren't my wife. And if uh, 
we could afford to have a real manager. He would say that a lot. And um, he's like, you can always work at um, a fast food restaurant instead, if that's what you want to do. And I was like, you know, it never made rational sense to me why he would say something like that, because he would, you know, it just, it was just a mess. And um, it is what it is. And I learned a lot from that, just from reading that. I'm like, it's better to be able to tell the truth because it does set you free. You're able to like say, yes, we are having problems and maybe we need to stop doing this, you know? And um, now applying it to my life now, um, I can admit when I'm wrong and um, I do it pretty quickly. Like um, for instance, when I was going to work the other day, um, I forgot the key and I was already there. So um, I was gonna be obviously late to open. So I called the owner right away and I said, you know, and, but honestly, before I called, I was like, should I call? Maybe they won't know. Maybe they won't know. And, you know, I'll just drive back and get the key. And, you know, and I thought, well, what should I do? What should I do? And I was praying. I'm like, all right, I could was doing like the serenity prayer, saying the serenity prayer, because I didn't call right away. I was like, oh, what do I do? You know, I didn't want to look bad. And um, so I called her and she's like, oh, well, that's something we've all done before. And I bet, and I was like, I won't ever do it again because like maybe I had to learn because it takes me a half an hour to get there. Right. So I had to drive all the way home, which is a half hour, and then I had to drive home and back. So that's like an hour and a half. And then plus I was going to be a half hour late. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I even went early thinking, oh, I'll, I'll go and get a coffee. So I'll be early and da, da, da. Well, what happened is I, I took, I didn't take, um, yeah, I, I took the different purse because I thought, oh, you know, so she was okay with it. But I really thought, oh, God, she's going to be like, you're an idiot. You know, because I was remembering what, um, how it used to be when I would work with my husband. And it was awful. He would always be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, like giving me the hard time on top of the fact that I was already feeling bad. So, you know, I can't control especially when you have an alcoholic as a partner. I mean, that's just a nightmare. And, um, but um, I can learn how to be okay with that if I were to stay in a relationship, but not if they're abusive, you know, that's over years and years of that. Yeah. At least for me, that's what I needed to do. I needed to stop being in that relationship because we were going into more problems than just verbal abuse. So I'll go ahead and get going with one day at a time in Ellen. And so grateful that you guys are here and um, thank you for all the new subscribes and thank you for the thumbs up. I know you're here and it also helps to like get this out to other people who are possibly looking for some type of relief you know, in their day. So, you know, reading every day is what I do. So I do this first and foremost for myself so that I can, I can do my spiritual practice of reading the material and then I can listen to it actually on my way to work. And I really needed it that day for sure when I was late. I was like, you know, you don't do that twice anymore. You go like, where are my keys before I leave? Yes, make sure you have them. All right, so, okay, here we go, page 236. We learned so much in Al-Anon and in such interesting and unexpected ways. In the midst of somewhat bantering interchange at a meeting, 
everyone suddenly laughed at something that was said. Wait a minute, one member interrupted. Everyone around this table is smiling. We've all put aside our griefs and our grievances. Do we behave in this cheerful way at home or do we automatically put on our martyr face? I know I do. And right now I'm going to begin to change that. So do I habitually wear my martyr face <laughs> to remind my spouse what a hard time they're giving me? Or do I try to lift their spirits, already so depressed by guilt and confusion? Will I try, really try, from now on to be pleasant and a bit more happy, even when things aren't going my way? Am I afraid to let those around me know I do have some reasons to be happy? Or do I want everybody to feel sorry for me? Okay. This would have been really good when I was actually in that relationship. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We would see. I would probably get made fun of, but no use crying over the spilt milk now. So um, that thou art happy, thou oust to God. So always to, all right, let me start over. This is a quote from John Milton, Paradise Lost. So let's try this again. That thou art happy, thou owest to God. That thou continuest such, thou owest to thyself. Okay. <laughs> Are you wearing your martyr face? I don't know what my martyr face is like. It's not a very pretty face, that's for sure. I don't know. Let me learn to understand myself first. And pray each day may advance my steps on the road to understanding that I may leave nothing undone that could have changed my life for the better. I think this is one of those things for sure. Let's just find the good, the best we can, even when we have a relationship with an active alcoholic or even if the alcoholic is not active and we still have, you know, relationships are not easy, right? Let's just face it. Um, they are what they are and um, we have to have a good relationship with ourselves and our higher power. And if we can focus on that, I hear that that works really well. So I am a work in progress for myself and, you know, um, we all are here together. The ones watching this have a similar malady and that is dealing with alcoholism in our lives, whether um, they're still using or not, or if we grew up in a home with alcoholism, or, you know, it's just because it's a thinking disease and it affects us all, all the kids and the, the family members. And um, just because our thinking gets distorted, you know, we become uh, having that, um, you know, that, that strong codependent behavior where we're trying to overhelp in certain areas and we get mixed messages. And um, yeah, it's, it's not an easy, it's not easy. Um, and yet uh, that victim mentality does not serve us in our adult lives and in our relationships. You know, um, growing up in that and being a child of alcoholism, um, you know, we, we didn't know what else to do, right? Um, certain things that we, we did to survive in that atmosphere um, will, won't, will not necessarily serve us as adults if we wanna have healthy um, relationships 
you know, with ourselves because we have to, to be able to, um, yeah, work on the steps. There's, there's a, this program supplies that, um, has the, the base where we didn't necessarily have that base. And, um, um, in uh, my other series, uh, where we're learning A Course in Miracles, if you're interested in that, um, today was lesson 140, and that is only salvation can be said to cure. And cure is a word that cannot be applied to any remedy the world accepts as beneficial, is what they say. And um, it says that um, it's about atonement um, that heals with certainty. And that is um, working on ourselves and um, being truthful and honest, just like one of the readings we just read, talking about um, telling the truth and healing and not living in that uh, victim mentality because we cannot heal in that particular, my chair is creaking, so we can't heal in that. We can't heal when we're wearing our martyr face so that we can act like a victim to our alcoholic spouse or family member, right? We have to work on ourselves one day at a time, little by little, finding what we treasure in our lives and, and um, you know, working on ourselves. You know, what is our part in all that? So with all that said, let's read the next reading and that is um, hope for today. And that'll be on page two, 235 again. And I'm really grateful that you're here with me. So thank you. Being a sponsor has been an important part of my recovery from growing up with alcoholism. In fact, as a sponsor, I never give as much as I get. For example, seeing the sponsee blossom in the sunshine of encouraging words shows me the importance of being gentle with myself and gives me an opportunity to practice the comfort giving spoken in Tradition 5. When I have the privilege of hearing the secret a sponsee expected to carry in silence for a lifetime, I am reminded of how relieved I was to finally lay down the burden of my secrets with my sponsor. Conversations in person or over the phone with the sponsees often generate laughter and reminding both of us that our tragedies have elements of exaggerated comedy as well. When a sponsee whom I've seen grow in leaps and bounds shares discouragement over seemingly slow progress, I become open to the possibility that my own discouragement may be a case of distorted thinking rather than actual lack of growth. Hmm. In becoming a sponsor, I cultivate a listening heart for others as well as for myself. And there's a quote from Sponsorship, What It's All About, page 11. The interchange between sponsor and sponsorship is a form of communication that will nourish both of you. Well, I am not a sponsor. Yet. I'm still new in the program and um but that gives me something to look forward to and another way another point of view of looking at um my conversations with my sponsors i have a sponsor in this group and also in the other 12-step program and um thinking about like my impatience with it like because i want to be able to get through the steps so that i can know know myself so that I won't make those mistakes again. And, um, but she's always, well, the one in the other group, she's like, no, just take your time. And my sponsor in this group, we just, um, we just talk. I'm really not doing the steps through this particular program, but they're the same. So I'm working on that AWOL and uh, a way of life. And um, basically what it is, is just going 
um, very slowly in reading the, the, the blue book in AA on, um, I think it's page 68. And, um, you know, just reading how to do, you know, right now we're in step four. I know I'm talking about step four a lot, but I'm, you know, it's just something that's just taking its time. And um, we're working on um, fears of people. So, and then um, also working on uh, random fears. And so then we're going through the process of then doing the turnarounds and understanding what these fears are about. So, you know, little by little, bit by bit. And then I can understand, I'll be able to sponsor someone, you know, if that's uh, what God's plan is for me then um, I'll be prepared and um, also to be able to see how that works instead of uh, me trying to overhelp or have a distorted thinking of um, how to do that, you know. And um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and say the serenity prayer right now. And um, I'm really grateful, absolutely grateful that I have this platform and that I can communicate with you guys and um, that your comments are really meaningful to me and um, I respond to everyone and um, please um, thank you and um, I just wanted to just really tell you thank you. So we'll go ahead and say the serenity prayer. Here we go. Just take a nice deep breath in and out and feel grounded and present so that we can connect to our higher power. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, to have the courage to change the things we can, and to have the wisdom to know the difference. So God's will be done. Amen. So keep coming back. It works if you work it. And I'll see you tomorrow. I love you so much. Bye. See you tomorrow.